In this video, we're going to talk about tracking landed costs in QuickBooks Online. There's a manual process, and then there's a semi-automated process that you can use using Right Tools' new feature called landed cost allocation. Now, let's talk about using QuickBooks Online with no third-party apps and how you would track landed costs. First, what you're looking at this on the screen is a bill where I'm receiving the inventory from my vendor. So what you're seeing here is the quantities of all the items that I'm receiving and all the price of what I'm paying my vendor. I'm paying this to my supplier. Now, outside of this bill, I may incur other costs, shipping, insurance, maybe tariffs. And then what we want to know is we want to know what is the real cost of our inventory that includes all of those uh, additional expenses that way, I am not fooled into thinking that $38 is a true cost of my inventory because we have all these external costs that we're not including in our inventory costs. In QuickBooks Online, there's no automated process for this. So whatever you put in the bill when you receive the inventory is exactly what's going to be logged as your inventory value. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what are those landed costs and then we need to add them to the individual rate of the inventory while, it, uh, while it's being received. So I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to go into a profit and loss real quick and I'm going to show you how I organize all the expenses related to landed costs, again, shipping, insurance, tariffs, so I can see them all in one place and from that place I know how to manage and then allocate them. So what I usually do is I create an account in my profit and loss uh, called the landed cost allocation. I call it, I make it a cost to goods sold account. And as I accumulate all these costs, insurance, shipping, all this stuff, it starts showing up in my PL. Eventually I'm gonna get them out of my PL and I'm gonna put them into my inventory through the landed cost calculation. So I'm gonna go into this total dollar amount here so we can see all the transactions that are associated with this landed cost allocation account. As you can see, I'm gonna sort these by vendor. We see multiple vendors here. We see AXA, which is an insurance company. We see China World Wholesale, which is where we're buying product from. We have DHL Global Shipping, which is where we're shipping, uh, who, who we're shipping product with. And then we have US Customs and Border Protection for our tariffs. Now, generally, you're gonna have multiple transactions going on. So you're not just gonna have one where it's gonna be very easy to track. So when you go into this, um, expense account, you're going to see every single transaction you have ever allocated here. So a little trick that I like to do is in the line description, I like to put a PO number, an order number, some sort of number identifier. So I know that all these transactions are lumped together. So I can simply just sort in the report, sorted by line description. And now I see them all lumped together because I went into each transaction and I put PO number and I put the same PO number across every transaction. So I know that about half of these transactions are all related to each other, and then the second half are also related to each other. Now, another way you can do this, is sort of a quick, quick hack about this, is you can use the customer project or the customer to identify them. So in this particular case, I'm actually gonna open one of them to show you. I'm gonna show you where I put the PO number and then where you assign the customer job. So for example, in this case, I put it here in the description. I have landed cost allocation. I have the total dollar amount that I paid for shipping, which is right there, 750. But I always start with the description there, the PO number, which is what shows up in the report. Then over here where it says customer project, I selected a particular customer or a particular uh, project to uh, group the transactions by. So if I go back into my report, and instead of just counting on the line description, which I can sort, which is great, it, this actually works great. The problem is it's not so good for subtotals. I can then use the grouping feature. I can come up here where it says group by, and then I can click on the drop down menu and I can group these by customer and sub customer. So once I click on group by customer and sub customer, these, were, these are now going to be grouped together again, because in every single transaction, I'm assigned a customer or project and now I get an actual total. So you see the total here is 2305. That means that between my tariffs, my insurance and my freight, I have to add an additional 2305.50 into uh, and spread across the in individual value of all the inventory I'm receiving. 
So the bill that contains the inventory is this one right here that contains a zero because I purposefully use the account as a zero so I can group them together and identify them. So now that I know what's the total amount of landed costs that I need to allocate, which is 2305, I'm gonna go back into the original bill where I was receiving the item. And then in the original bill, I am now going to allocate the 2305. So my goal is to make sure that the bill stays at 2238. It needs to stay at 2238 because that's what I'm actually going to pay my vendor. But 2305 is the amount that I'm gonna allocate into each of these individual items. So right here in the line that I previously used zero, I'm gonna put there negative 2305.50. So what ends up happening is now I have at the total dollar amount of the bill is completely skewed, right? I need to get back to that original dollar amount, the 23, 38 or whatever, um, in order to get the correct dollar amount. So what I need to do is now I gotta figure out how to spread that 2305.50 back into the individual items. So if you are using a manual process, uh, you would probably export this, uh, this all these uh, lines, the little table into Excel, and then in Excel, you would use formula allocations to figure out how to spread 2305.50 .50 proportionally or, or based on weight or based on volume. You have to figure out your own system and then figure out how to increase each of these amounts to, to, to give you an additional 2305 in the grand total. That way this bill goes back to the original dollar amount. So I'm gonna use the right tool landed cost allocator. So if you don't have right tool, uh, I'll put a link in the description. You're gonna download right tool. You're gonna turn on the feature. It should be currently under experiments pro. It's called landed cost allocator. You have to make sure to turn that on. So when you have that on and you go into your bill, you will see the bu that button that says uh, landed cost allocator. So we'll click on that button. This is landed cost allocator. You're gonna get a pop-up that's then gonna, then it's gonna ask you, hey, how much do you want to allocate? So we'll do 2305.50. And then in here, you're gonna notice that automatically in this little pop-up screen, it's going to allocate or change the individual rate of, of each of the individual items. Now there's multiple ways to go about this. This is called the allocation method. So right now it's based on value. So if we look at the old value, so I'm gonna exit, exit out of this really quick. We look at the old value, which is this total amount here. The items that contain the most value is the second item which is 850, and then the next one is 736. So these two are gonna have a proportionate amount much higher than maybe the $76 in this 192. So that's the value allocation method. You could also, let me go back and put 2305.50. Then I could also do the quantity method. So for example, I don't care about the value of the product. I just wanna grab the 2305 divided by the total quantity. So this is the sum of all the quantity across all the items. So then I can add the exact same dollar amount to each of the items. So in this case, you see 2994 is the allocated amount per item. So it, 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 it gives you the original amount, the 2994, and then it tells you what the new rate is. And then you see, of course, the new total, and then you get a preview percentage of allocation where you can kind of see where uh, that lands. And then the other option here that you have is equal. So for example, we have five total lines so it grabs the 2305, divides it by five, and then it spreads it across each of the items. So it's really up to you how you wanna do this. Of course, if you have to do it by weight or something like that, that's gonna be very, very complicated because we don't have weight information sitting here in our, in our screen, but we have these three methods, the value, the quantity, and the, and the equal. Then once you pick your uh, valuation method, whichever one you want to use, uh, you can actually click on export as a CSV. So essentially you can have your own sort of permanent record of what, um, what you had in a little worksheet. You can then maybe even attach this to the, the bill or something like that. Uh, so you can have a, um, a permanent record of that. Um, so that's actually a good option. So I'll go ahead and save that. Um, I'll save it here somewhere in my computer so then I can attach this, this spreadsheet somewhere. But you get a record, right? You could print it, you can save, save it as a spreadsheet, whatever you want. Um, and then we're ready to go. Now I want to allocate. So I want you to kind of notice 
that these individual rates, 38, 25, 32, they are going to change. When I click on update, you're gonna see that immediately what the right to allocation does is that it goes in there and it changes each of the rates for you to match that allocation that was, uh, that was shown in there. And then if you look at the descriptions, it actually tells you original item cost 38 plus allocated 2994. So it gives you um, records in the actual description so you can actually kind of keep track of what's going on in here. Now look at this, the total is 40, uh, 45, 4350. That's where I have to go back in here and do negative 2305.50. And then once I do that, my bill ends up at the exact same dollar amount that I have to pay my vendor. Now you're not gonna send this to your vendor because this is irrelevant to your vendor. Your vendor doesn't care what your landed cost is. They only care about what they charged you. Uh, so you're always gonna be paying against the original bill. So just because in QuickBooks, your individual uh, itemized rates for each quantity doesn't match the bill, it's not a big deal, but that's the purpose of attaching. So I go to add attachment. I'm gonna go ahead and attach you know, the, the, the spreadsheet the CSV file that it, it was produced, and I'll also probably attach the original vendor bill in there so, so we can keep records of that, but we have it in the description all, all for us. So what ends up happening now is that my bill is good to go. Again, I'm gonna pay the grand total of 2238, which is the original amount. I do save, I go to pay bills, but then I wanna show you when I go back into that report, and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh and what you're gonna end up seeing is you're gonna end up seeing a nail, a total of zero into that landed cost when we group it by that particular project. Right? If, we, if we don't have a group by project and we just have them um, sitting here with, with no grouping, which is fine, just keep in mind that uh, the total dollar amount here is gonna be the remaining unallocated amount because we have this big negative uh, amount that was sort of canceling uh, those out. If I go back to the original profit and loss report and I refresh here, you're going to see that the now total uh, landed cost allocation is 1839.86. Uh, it went down by that 2305 because the inventory was brought in at the correct value. Now, if I go back into the reports and then I look for uh, sort of like an inventory valuation report, for example, it's a typical report that we would look at. So let me put here inventory valuation summary, and then I go pick up one of these items. So we have one of these items here. So I said this item 1726.01-04, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the asset value or any of these numbers. And when I click on that, it's gonna give me the detailed version of the report where I can see the history of every single time I have acquired this product. So I can, get, I can see you know, all these times that I've been acquiring at the regular rate, you know, 3841, and then we see this particular bill where it was acquired at 67.94. So right now in my inventory, historically, I've been using the default value that I get it from the vendor, and now with this correction, I am now using the value of the vendor plus the landed cost. So the purpose of doing landed cost is to correct your inventory asset value uh, for it to correctly reflect the actual overall cost of the product. So then when you're selling it, when you're putting it in an invoice, your average cost or your FIFO, whichever evaluation method uh, your QuickBooks uses, usually uses FIFO, but it will start, you, when, when these particular items start kick in, your cost of goods sold is gonna reflect this amount and not the original vendor. Um, uh, rate. So anyway, I hope that was useful. I know there's a lot of moving parts. Landed cost is um, a pretty heavy topic, but hopefully you liked the method of using uh, right tool to help you automate that for you. It's going to, I mean, it's going to, it should save you tons, tons of time to, uh, to use a, a method like this instead of using a, a manual process, which is usually what people do. Thank you. See you in the next one.